This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next hour, John Van Camp and I are going to take a look at health issues that I think most of us are really interested in. Uh, the insane Daryl Wayne is off on vacation, and uh, we'll welcome him back shortly. But John Van Camp and I have known each other a couple of years. He's sitting in for Daryl. Thank you, John. I appreciate what you're going to do for us today. Oh, my pleasure, Mark. It's glad to be here. Okay, great. Uh, during the uh, hour, we're going to talk about fertility in the next, uh, in the latter part of the show. And we're going to talk with two women who have undergone fertility treatments and are so uh, happy with the outcome that they are donating to a charity. We'll talk about fertility, the psychological aspect uh, of that, and um, looking forward to that. I actually uh, saw their bracelet that they're using to raise money for people who can't afford in vitro fertilization. And we'll be talking about that during the last half of our show. Right now, we're going to go to Texas. Um, I'm not even sure where we're going. I know some of them are in Texas. We have a number of people uh, on our line. We're only going to be speaking with Christina Perkins. Christina is the vice president of business development for a company that I did not know anything about until recently. Uh, I'm going to tell you what the company does, and then I'm going to tell you the name. What they do is they help insurance companies get their act together. I mean, I'm just calling it like I see it. Uh, she is the VP of Business Insights. Christina Perkins will be joining us uh, from Nant Health. That's N-A-N-T-H-E-A-L-T-H, and you can look for them at Nant Health. Dot com. Christina, thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Mark. It's great to be here. I'm going to make a, a statement. I've said this before. I think insurance companies are basically crooks. Uh, health insurance companies leading the pack. Uh, they make money by denying claims, by um, making it difficult to traverse through the insurance game. And that's what it is. It's a game. Uh, recently, your people let me know that the California Department of Managed Health Care this month in March actually uh, fined, along with uh, the California Department of Health Care Services, LA Care, the nation's largest health care provider, they fined them $55 million. And they fined them because grievances weren't handled. There wasn't a fast track to that, and it was hurting members. Christina, is this commonplace in the insurance industry? So the fines that LA Care experienced, I think, are a bit of a new development. And as they mentioned in that article, that's the highest fine that we've ever seen for this kind of situation. But I think what it does is raise awareness of something that is just all too prevalent in that the amount of work it takes to make sure that patients are getting the right care at the right place, at the right time, at the right price, creates an awful lot of work in our very administrative, heavy healthcare system here in the U.S. So the amount of effort it takes for a provider to determine whether or not they have to request prior authorization, and then the amount of work that a payer has to do in order to determine if this is the appropriate care for this patient, if it adheres with their medical policies and things like that, requires a lot of coordination, a lot of exchange of information. And we don't today have great processes and certainly very little consistency from payer to payer and case to case. Uh, for folks to really streamline these processes. And I love well, the way you uh, characterized Nant Health, <laughs> helping people get their act together. And that is, that is certainly what we're looking to do, all in the interest, as everybody is focused on, of um, helping patients get that right care at the right time. The U.S. has uh, the highest medical costs of most Western Absolutely. countries, right? which is why medical 
vacations. You can go and get a facelift, but even more serious conditions are handled by physicians from around the world, many trained here in the U.S. They go back to Germany, they go to South Africa, even Mexico, and they get the same care at less cost. Right. Is it because of that administrative heavy heaviness? Well, certainly that's part of it. When it's just too onerous to figure out how do I get approval to get the care I want. And a lot of the times I think it is the um, elective things that the people who can afford to pay whatever they want to both travel and receive the care from the doctor they choose um, are taking that route. The situations like we heard about with LA Care though are those regular people who have health insurance, who expect that to cover them and expect that the processes are in place to figure out how they get that care when they need it. But so often the burden of figuring out that process and navigating the healthcare system falls to the patient. Navigating the healthcare system in the U.S. is absolutely a maze. It's a quagmire. It is. You've been involved in the healthcare industry for at least two years. Tell me. <laughs> Add a zero to that. <laughs> <laughs> so for 20 and then years. A couple. Yeah. Right. Um, has it gotten better or has it gotten worse? Oh, I think in some ways it's gotten better, but, you know, there's between legislation that's aiming to make things better and more consistent, give people rules to follow. Often that kind of backfires on us and it creates more burden because payers in particular have to figure out how they can change their processes, how they can adopt new technologies um, in order to meet those regulations on top of just trying to do the business they're doing to serve their members. Do you think insurance companies are dictating medical practices rather than the doctor saying, this patient needs this, this, and this, and the insurance company says, no, 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 we're going to do it this way. It's a tricky balance, and one of the areas that we focus on at Nant Health is supporting decisions based on medical evidence. So helping payers apply policies that are based on evidence-driven care, what we know works in certain conditions. And there's a lot of data out there about that, and it's impossible for the doctors to stay on top of it. So that's another area where technology can help guide the provider to choose something that's evidence-based and then is going to align with the payer's policies. We're going to take a time out, Christina, and when we come back, we're going to talk more in depth about Nant Health, what they do, how they do it, and why isn't everybody else doing this too? Uh, we were going to do we're going to do that coming up after our break. Uh, I'm Mark Allen, along with uh, the vacationing uh, in Saint Darrell Wayne. We also have John Van Camp in studio with us. He is uh, taking charge of the controls and keeping me on time. Uh, listening in, by the way, we have Tracy and I hope I do this right, Bowringer and Lena Garcia, uh, who are a part of the uh, Nant Health team. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. Join us at LateNightHealth.com, LateNightHealth.com. We'll have Christina's picture up there. There will be a link to NantHealth.com if you want information about that. If you're a physician, insurance company, or even a regular person like me, you'll be able to go and explore Nant Health. Uh, we will continue as Late Night Health moves forward right now.
Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright Here Now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright Here Now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthere.com. Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents, or just have fun. Find out about the advertising opportunities with Late Night Health. Call us at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at latenighthealth.com. That's info at latenighthealth.com. Join Late Night Health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care. Call now at 805-391-0308. That's 805-391-0308. Role models. They can make all the difference. In our world today, they have never been more important. One of the nation's most successful mentoring organizations is Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of Los Angeles. Their mission is to assist youth in achieving their full potential through innovative and impactful programs. And no nonprofit agency does it better. Jewish Big Brothers Big Sisters of LA serves Jewish children, boys and girls in our local community with a mentoring program that's been going strong since 1915. That's only the beginning. This nationally known agency owns and operates Camp Bob Waldorf. Its summer camping and weekend retreat programs enrich the lives of youth throughout greater Los Angeles. Then there's a college support program and last but not least, work that helps kids all over the world through the Teen Talk app. Want to learn more? Go to jbbbsla.org. Donate. Get involved. There's no better way to make a difference. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of Carbon 60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's Carbon 60 is the premium Carbon 60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxic and cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his Carbon 60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com. 
Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with John Bandcamp, sitting in for the vacationing Daryl Wayne. We're talking with Christina Perkins. She is the Vice President of Business Insights at Nant Health. I want to talk about prior authorization, and I'm going to tell you what happened personally to me. Uh, I don't even remember what the procedure was. It wasn't a big one. It, it, it may have been uh, uh, something uh, for, um, I'm trying to think of what it was. Anyway, it was very minor. But after I got the prior authorization, I got a note from the insurance company. Even though we've, we've pre-approved this procedure, we may change our minds at a later date. Mm. Which I think is absolutely criminal. Right. And then what happens in that case? You know, it, it is such a complicated system. And I, everybody's got their story, right? I've got countless, <laughs> my own and my family's, um, you know, just trying to get a medication that your doctor has indicated is absolutely critical to your care. And it's a Friday night and the insurance company can't decide until Monday whether they're going to pay for that. It's crazy. It is crazy. Um, but it's not, you know, it's a fact of the processes that we have in place and really everybody's attempt collectively to do right by the patient. I truly believe that personally, but we certainly hear way too many of these cases where it all backfires and the patient is ultimately the one that suffers. And dies. And, yeah. In some cases, we've... We've seen statistics from every corner that say the prior authorization process itself, the fact that you have to go through these logistics of requesting approval, the mother may I process, when the doctor has determined a course of treatment for a patient, so often leads to either adverse outcomes due to the weight or abandonment of treatment because the patient can't afford to pay for it themselves and can't risk that their insurance company won't. So streamlining this process, um, making it electronic, right? Digital is the new wave. Everybody wants to do everything online. You do all your banking online. You expect all of your health care is online too. But the maybe scary fact is that 75% of exchanges in healthcare where a provider and a payer are sharing information happen via fax. And still? One, still. I haven't yeah. had a fax machine in two years. Exactly. And maybe it's e-fax. Okay, so it lands in somebody's email inbox, right? Right. But that still means that a human being has to pick that up and read it and do something about it, enter data into a system, and that leads to time and delays and people are our most expensive resource and our scarcest more and, and, and more right now it's as it's the economy changes exactly yeah. so the fact that both providers and payers are currently so reliant on human resources to apply these processes um, is one of the things that really drives that cost in the system and many of the people who are handling that data are hourly, low-end, untrained Well, you people. might actually be surprised about that. Part of the yeah. reason it's so expensive is they're clinical nurses. They are clinically trained people because they have to understand the context of the information. They have to know what treatment's being requested for what condition and decide whether or not the policies and the evidence support that course of treatment. Interesting. I did not we have know a that. scenario. Yeah, it, it's surprising. You would think that it's purely administrative work, and perhaps typing it into a system is, but then that creates a handoff. So, very right. often, both the providers and the health plans are employing very expensive, very um, scarce clinical resources to do a lot of this work. Let's talk about Nant Health. Nant Health, as I said, to me, in reading about it, you're there not for the insurance company, not for the uh, physician. You're there for me, for the the patient. 
to make to make the insurance company do what they're supposed to do. That's how I'm looking at it. So the prior authorization, can you tell me how the technology that you have uh, at Nant Health can help me as a as a uh, subscriber? Sure. Ultimately, it all comes down to reducing that turnaround time and giving you as the patient clarity that your provider is going to give you care that your insurance company is going to pay for. And our goal is not to kind of make anybody do what they're supposed to, but give them better ways to do it, to help those providers and payers work together much more efficiently. So the providers don't have to have a collection of sticky notes or a giant binder sitting on their desk that they try to keep up to date with all the health plan rules, but instead they can log into a system, enter the information that they need to, uh, confirm the patient's insurance coverage, enter the information about their treatment, and ideally get an immediate answer about whether that's going to be covered without anybody at the health plan, those clinical trained folks having to review that case and wait until Monday when somebody's there at their desk to do that, we can give them an answer immediately in a lot of cases. And when we can't do that automatic approval, we can get reliable, clear, complete information to the health plan in order to facilitate that review and make it much more efficient. Nobody's doing pick up faxes, enter information, go look up the policies in their online documentation. They've got all of the data that they need in order to make a quick decision. So with that pre-authorization, let's say it's Friday, a man or a woman has a, breaks a leg or has a heart attack, mm-hmm. you know, uh, is rushed to the ER yep. and a, a, a primary physician comes in. Uh, we won't even go into hospitalists because I don't like them. But uh, we'll we'll talk about uh, an, an, a doctor comes in and says, "Well, you need surgery. You need this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. You've already given your uh, your insurance card and information." And the doctor says, "You you, you know we have to do this now for whatever reason. You, need, right. you can't wait till Monday for a, a broken leg or a heart attack. You need to take action, right?" Can Nant Health help in that case too? Yeah, absolutely. Thankfully, there are, you know, rules in place and accommodations for those emergency scenarios. Um, And there are some new legislations coming out. The No Surprises Act um, is, was just introduced at the end of last year. And one of the things that that covers is preventing the risk of surprise medical bills, especially for emergency care situations. I so mean, the health I, uh, plan can't bill overbill for those cases. Can't overbill when aspirins are charged at twelve dollars <laughs> yeah, a piece. Well. I mean, come on. <laughs> Listen, I, th- this is fascinating stuff. As you do more, will you come back and and explain more to us? I know we have a we've had a short period of time. There's so many more things that we could we can talk about. By the way, we should point out that the end user, the uh, the patient, doesn't pay for Nant Health. Correct. Right? Will you come back? You didn't answer that. Oh, I would love to. And then we've <laughs> okay. got other folks on our team who can add some other color to the discussion and would be more than happy to talk to you. Thanks so All much, right. Mark. I Thank you so much. Uh, listen, we've been talking about Nant Health. You can find out more by going to nanthealth.com, N-A-N-T health.com. And you can find out more about them by going to latenighthealth.com. That's LateNightHealth.com. I'm Mark Allen in the driver's seat. John Bandcamp from Boss Boss Radio. May as well uh, give you a little little promo there. And uh, we will continue as Late Night Health continues. 